so good to me. I don't know if I have the capacity to do that or not. Has God been good to anybody? I wonder just for a moment if we could attempt, just try to praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. Two gentlemen were arguing one day and one was arguing about the necessity of the Holy Ghost. The other one said, you don't need the Holy Ghost. He said, you mean you believe you have to have the Holy Ghost to go to heaven? Thank you. I believe that too. And the other one looked at him and says, I believe you need the Holy Ghost to go to Walmart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Ghost every day. Whether I'm sleeping no matter what I'm doing, I need the help of the Holy Ghost. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. You can be seated just a moment. Uh, he said to make myself at home, so I'm going to do that. Thank you, Pastor Blankenship, for the opportunity to be here. can't express how honored I am for this opportunity to minister and be a part of this service when my baby's baby is being dedicated. Thank you for such a beautiful job of doing that. And so... Thank you again, Pastor, for the opportunity to preach. I'm going to do my best with the help of the Holy Ghost. And we honor your leadership, Pastor and Sister Blankship, their family, their years of service, not to this church, but to the organization. Thank you so very much. We honor you. All of the great leadership of this church. Amen. Thank you for what you do week in and week out. We honor you. Thank you to Brother and Sister Gwendu. I thought about this. In the day and the hour that we live in, the job of the evangelist is not an easy task. It's not an easy task, but they have committed themselves to the job, the duty of responsibility of the evangelist, fulfilling part of those five things that are necessary for apostolic ministry. And we thank you, we honor you, we thank you for being a good dad, a good son-in-law. Thank you to the Gwendu family that's here. Amen. Brother and Sister Gwendo opened their home to us. I think when they did that, they didn't realize how much I ate. Thank you so much. And the only time Vashti came out of the room when it was time to eat steak. But we do honor them. Thank you. I wanted to say publicly today, thank you for raising a godly son, an honorable son. Thank you for your contributions to the kingdom of God. And for honoring us by allowing us a space in your life. And you said it to me this morning in front of your house. We're glad. No, we're glad that God placed you in our lives. Amen. I guess that makes us Paul and law and laws or something. I'm not sure. But we're honored. We're thankful that you're part of our lives. We honor the faithful saints of God. Why don't you give yourselves a big hand? Really? That's, that's it. Just, just a little courtesy clap. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Thank you for being faithful. There's one right there. There's another one. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have a church. And of course, we're thankful that Jesus showed up today. Amen. We appreciate the presence of the Lord that we feel here this morning in preparation and getting ready. And, and I, I just felt impressed to send out a push notification through our church app uh, to all of those who are part of that app and this is what I said this is the day the Lord has made expect something amazing if he made it praise the Lord then I'm just going to expect something amazing to happen and in this service today before this service is over with I've come today amen to minister to the hearts and the lives of the saints of God and if you're not here and you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost you're missing out on the greatest gift that God could afford to give you of himself Amen. I ask you again, does anybody appreciate the Holy Ghost today? I ask you to be seated because um, I was reminiscing just a little bit the other day. And Joy is my baby daughter. She's the fifth child, so she was the baby. I warned Brother Jeremiah on multiple occasions when he came, and we sat at lunch, and he asked me if he could marry my daughter. I said, now, you remember she's the baby. 
carried a conversation a little while longer and I probably five or six times I would just stop what I was saying and say you have to remember she's the baby now you understand that you get that right and I think he's getting a little clearer understanding of what that means but joy used to play the piano my recliner set right there close to the piano and she began to play and she composed a little song as far as I know she never put any words to, to the song it was more of a I guess you would call it a lullaby sounding uh, song that she had composed and so I composed a poem this is at least my t attempt at poetry so just humor me today amen I felt I felt it needful to read this in your hearing and this may not be for anybody but me because joy and now JL hold a special place in our heart obviously I call it the great transition I'm gonna preach a little while amen just hold on you're getting impatient here the great transition it's such a wonderful mystery that's been displayed for all of history it's born in the heart of every little girl to toy with daddy's heart and give it a whirl. So cute and cuddly, cooing, coddling, rock the baby, she's so sleepy. Whisper softly, princess sleeping, crying loudly, then whimper softly. Warm the bottle, change the diaper, baby powder and lotion, it's such a wonderful potion. I told you this was my attempt, okay? She's one of a kind. There's no one like her. Sweet and sassy. Laughing, fussy. She's tender-hearted. Don't speak harshly. Sugar feet and Eskimo kisses. Too quick she's growing. She's such a pretty little girl. And Elder Brother Gwendu said amen. Crawling, walking, oh no, she's falling. Skinned hands and knees, a bike she's riding won't be long. She will be driving. First day of school, mama's crying and daddy's trying to act like he's not. Okay, I told you this was my attempt at poetry, so I know that doesn't fit real well, but it's appropriate, all right? Life's not fair, time is flying. Worry, wonder, parents praying. Any parents pray. School years here are quickly fading. Leaving home, she's off to college. Letting go is never easy. Lord, I pray you keep her safely. The privacy and the peacefulness. Brother, Sister Gwendu's home. The Lord allowed me to add a few more stanzas, and it goes like this. Time has flown, and now she's grown. She's married and has a baby of her own. I give you a word. Please understand the transition has started again. Before you know it, time will have flown and JL will transition from baby to grown. Cherish each memory. Cherish each day with love because JL is a gift from above gift from above and when I originally wrote this before adding these last few stanzas this is how I ended the poem it says hurry home my precious little baby girls plural and I'm thankful for joy and JL amen thank you for humoring me today if you would stand in honor to the word of the Lord I'm taking your attention to Isaiah chapter 4 excuse me 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'll read that first. 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears? They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. He said, you're going to have to go through some stuff. 
do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come unto me shortly, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable, profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus. When thou comest, bring with thee in the books, especially the parchments. Alexander, verse 14, the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Verse 17, listen closely. Not withstanding. Someone say that today. Not withstanding. I feel the help of the Holy Ghost right now. The Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever Amen. And the church said amen. Amen. I would like to preach by the help of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Notwithstanding. God, we come to you today asking you to reach down. I'm just a vessel. I understand. God, you've chosen me to fulfill this responsibility for this day. God, help me to be a vessel of honor that would speak life, help, and hope that you would be glorified and your people would be edified and encouraged through this word today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I give of myself to the ministry of the word. Use me as you would in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. And my preliminary comments and my text will, is not indicative how long I will preach. And somebody say amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. We have a tendency in our humanity. Is anybody still in the flesh today? We, we have a tendency in our humanity to hear a message and then forget what the message is all about. Can I hear an amen from somebody? I, I was reminded of this truth by a pastor friend of mine. He's retired and evangelizes now. I was reminded. He said he was griping and complaining to his wife one day. They were going down the road and he said, nobody listens to me when I preach. Nobody remembers anything I say. Nobody remembers the title of my message. And, and he looked at her and he said, do you remember what I preached? last Sunday I hear brother Blankenship laughing over there because you don't want to be honest enough to say that I sometimes forget what's been preached that's our humanity and this friend of mine looked at his wife and he said do you can you tell me let me show you what I'm talking about can you tell me what I preached last week and she says um, um, uh, you, you know, I really can't remember. He said, see what I'm talking about. Nobody remembers. Nobody pays attention. I'm wasting my time. Nobody remembers anything I ever have to say, much less the titles that I preach. She says, well, can you tell me what you preached last week? And he stuttered and stumbled around there a few seconds. He said, come to think of it, I can't even remember what I preached last week. That's our humanity. That's what we're made of. We tend to forget an encouraging word when it should be helping us through another day. When the message is being preached in services like this, we can shout and we can respond. And, amen. We get the message during the service, but we have a tendency to soon forget the message. If we're lucky, we might remember the title. If we're lucky, we might remember a few words. 
words that the preacher said. The word goes forth. We respond. We get the message. We get a blessing. We pray through to a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And let me just insert here that the fresh touch of the Holy Ghost does us all good every once in a while. We shout around the altar. Amen. We get a blessing in the moment. We get the message during the moment. Amen. Somebody say, we get the message. We get the message at that time and here's the problem as I see it. While we get the message during the service, we tend to forget the message by the time the next day rolls around. We shout around the altar and we get encouraged and then strengthened in the moment. But I would like to present to you the word of God is more than just a, t- a moment of time where you receive a blessing in the moment. The word Word of God should go with you when you leave this house. The word of God should go with you if you're going to school. The word of God should go with you if you're going to work. Wherever you are, the word of God can be applied to every circumstance and every situation. Does anybody appreciate the word of God? But in our humanity... Pastor Blankenship prays and he studies. He seeks the mind and the will of God. He gets in this pulpit and he preaches the word of God. And we shout in the moment. Amen. But we have a little problem on Monday. And we're trying to remember what Pastor said. I've come to preach to somebody today. The word of God should be carried with you. It should be not be a time, a moment in time where you just get a little feel good for the moment but the first problem you face you've done forgotten about the word of God. I'm thankful that the word of God can help me tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm thankful that I can be encouraged by the word of God. We get the message in the moment. We get the message while it's being preached. And we get the message while brother so-and-so and and sister sister so-and-so shouting. And we get encouraged and we get strengthened. But the first little hiccup, the first little difficulty, the first trial. I've come to preach to some real folk. I know you're looking good. you got your Sunday best on. You're in the house of the Lord. But I've come to preach to somebody today. There's going to be some trouble that comes our way there's going to be some temptation that comes our way there's going to be some difficulty that comes our way and I've come to present to you a word from the word of God that you need to hold on to and understand that God is with me turn to your neighbor and nudge him and tell him hey no matter what I'm going through God is with me The first hiccup, the first trial we face, the first little difficulty, and we've forgotten the message. I've even heard people talk about, and you probably have too, they talk about what a good camp meeting message we heard. Man, we had church at camp meeting on Friday night. Amen. People were shouting. So many got the Holy Ghost, and you ask them, and you say, well, what was the message? Well, I, you know, uh, we had good church. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I say again, the word of God that goes forth across this sacred desk should be more than just a word for the moment. Amen. It should be more that tickles than what tickles your ear while you're sitting in this service. But when you face whatever you may face tomorrow and you're going to face difficulties in life, and we can all say amen to that. But no matter what you face, you should be able to re- recollect the word of God that goes forth forth and receive encouragement and strength from the word of God and say I can make it through amen I can endure this temptation I can overcome this trial I can hang in there because I got a word from the Lord I got a word from the Lord anybody want a word from the Lord I've come to preach it to you today understand that God is on your side amen Isaiah chapter 41 Verse 8 says, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. 
Thou whom I have chosen from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto them, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Verse 10. Fear thou not. Anybody need a word from the Lord? Here it is. Fear thou not. Fear thou not. Why? He goes on to say why. For I am with thee. Come on, that ought to make somebody want to shout today. Don't be afraid because I'm with you. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. You need strength today. Amen. Understand this word can apply to you. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that are incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find thee. Them, even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Verse 13. For I am the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand. Oh, help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm God, and I'm going to hold your right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not. Whew. Anybody else know what it says? I will. Help thee. There it is. You got a cheat sheet up there. Amen. I will help thee. Oh, praise the Lord. Can I get out behind the pulpit a little minute, Elder? Can, is it okay for me to get behind the pulpit? Amen. I, I've come to preach to some real folks. Life sends us a curveball every once in a while. Sometimes he la ba we go through difficult circumstances and situations in life none of us are exempt amen but I tell you what we do have we have a God who's on our side amen no matter what we go through in life we can take comfort in knowing uh, amen that God is on our side I kind of feel like running just a little bit today amen I wonder if somebody feels like shouting just a little bit I may not be as fast as I used to be amen but I just feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost on me today. Amen. God is on my side. No matter what you're going through, no matter what your circumstance, amen, God is for you and he's on your side. I'm just going to obey what I feel right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I just felt rise up in my, against me right now? I felt that rise up against me that would say, well, that's a good generic from the Word of God. Anybody can get in the pulpit and preach that. Amen. That's what I felt rise up against me. But I wonder if there's some folks in the house that could stand to your feet right now and say, God, amen, I receive into my spirit the fact, amen, that no matter what I go through in life, he talama sotoya. Amen. Come on, somebody respond to the Word of the Lord right now. Amen. I've got an assurance. Assurance. Things may get tough. Things may get difficult. But I've got an assurance that God is on my side. Amen. That no matter what I go through in life. Amen. I've got a God. He's on my side. He said, I'm going to hold you with my right hand. I'm going to hold you. Amen. That lets me know that I can make it through. Amen. Any situation in life, I can make it through. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, come on. By the help of the Holy Ghost, you can make it through. You can make it through. You can make it through. Come on, tell somebody. Some of you are not doing it. Turn to somebody right now and say, come on. By the help of God, you can make it. You can make it. You can make it. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I wonder, I, I wonder if we could just take a praise break right now. Come on, somebody, amen, take a praise break just a moment. He said, I'm with you. Everybody may be against you, but I'm with you. Things look difficult. It's hard, I know, but I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Amen, I got you by the right hand. I'm with you. Hallelujah. 
Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, the church is a beautiful thing. Why don't you grab somebody by the hand if it's appropriate right now. Just lift that hand toward heaven and magnify the name of our God together. Amen. I don't want to get in a hurry. I don't want to just skip through this today. Somebody needs to be encouraged through the word of God and understand that God is on your side. Come on, that's beautiful. Lift up the name of Jesus together. Hallelujah. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not, I'm going to help you. Amen, don't be afraid, I'm going to help you. Come on, that's beautiful in the presence of the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I'm thankful for the fact, oh God, you're on my side. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This word. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, sweet presence of the Lord is swept into this house right now. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This word notwithstanding. One reason we use titles is hopefully you can remember the title at least a part of what we say and somehow, some way, we need to bring it home with us, notwithstanding. Somebody shout, notwithstanding. We need to make it applicable to our lives. We need to get it out of the pew, out from around the altar. Amen. We need to take it out the door with us. And when we get in the car, we don't need to leave it in the car. We need to bring it in the house with us. I challenge you today. Take a, take a marker. Print it on your computer and print that word and put it somewhere where you can see it every day. Hey! I feel the help of the Holy Ghost today wanting to encourage and strengthen the people of God. If you're a guest here, you can receive the Holy Ghost at any moment. But I feel the direction of the Spirit to encourage the people of God today. It doesn't matter what the government is doing. It doesn't matter what our neighbor's doing. It doesn't matter what our boss is doing. God is on our side. I just wonder, I'm not as young as I used to be. I tried to make a lap. I'm probably going to pay for it in the morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just wonder if there's a young man that would make a lap for Pastor Rhodes right now. Hallelujah. Now, I wonder if there's another one that, that would make one for Pastor Blankenship right now. Come on. Hallelujah. And I wonder if there's anybody else that would lift your hands in the presence of God. Amen. Let it well up in your innermost being. I, I was worshiping beside this gentleman. I shook his hand. I don't even know his name. But during the worship service, he just began to, hey! amen. He began to open his mouth and magnify the name of the Lord. I feel that in this service today. Somebody ought to just open your mouth. Hey! God, I'm thankful for your presence. I'm thankful that you're with me. I'm thankful that you're on my side. Yay, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Take it to work with us. Take it to school. Take it with us throughout life. We don't need to forget it. God is for us. It needs to be part of our everyday lives, not just our dressed up Sunday or Wednesday lives. Amen. I say this at home and I say it here. We don't just worship God with our lips. We worship God with our lives. Sunday is not the day that we put on worship and praise, but when we get up, Hallelujah. When we get up on a Monday, I want my life to be a reflection of the goodness of God because he's on my side. He's for me. He's not against me. Amen. I want him to know that I trust him with every aspect of my life. Everything, that, the good days, the bad days, everything that I go through in life, I want him to know that I trust him. Amen. It may be a broken down car. Amen. That I can't get anybody to fix 
Amen. But I trust God to see me through every circumstance in life. Come on, give him a hand clap and a shout right now. Uh, notwithstanding, praise the Lord. Your neighbor you've been nudging is going to have a bruise on their side, so nudge somebody else. Tell them, notwithstanding. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, say it with conviction right now. Say it with understanding because you're recita la bakataya. You're receiving a word from the Lord today. Notwithstanding. I wish you would get that in your spirit. Amen. I'm intrigued by words. Words amaze me, and this word notwithstanding captured my attention. So I decided to study it out just a bit. Notwithstanding as a preposition. Amen. I, I found this online, okay? I hated English. I just barely got by English my senior year of high school. I took an English class because I was required. And if you talk to me any amount of time, you understand I butcher the English language. But here I is, all right? And we know... And I have to remind myself, every once in a while, I remind myself, God, unless I begin to think of myself more highly, amen, I begin to tell God, God, I'm nothing without you. I know you know I need you, but I want you to know that I know that I need you. I don't have this thing. I'm just a vessel. Use me as a vessel of honor. I'm a nobody, amen, representing somebody. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Amen. Anybody know him today? Day. I want him to know, amen, that I, 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 I am just a vessel and I remind myself every once in a while that he used a cussing fisherman, he used a rooster, he used a donkey, amen, he used all sorts of things, but I'm just a vessel today, so let me fulfill what God is asking me to preach. You need to get a notwithstanding in your spirit that says no matter what I go through in life, I have a God who's on my side. No matter what I have to endure, I've got a God who's on my side. No matter what trouble I have faced, amen, God is on my side. As a preposition, similar, it means despite, regardless of, notwithstanding. As an adverb, nevertheless, in spite of this, nonetheless, even so, all the same. In spite of this, in spite of that, despite this, and despite that, after everything, however, still yet, be that as it may, having said that, that said, for all that, just the same, anyway, in any event, at any rate, at all events, when all is said and done. I like that one. When all is said and done. With all, how be it? As a conjunction, it means although, in spite of the fact that, even despite the fact that, even though, though, for all that, its origin, listen to me today, its origin is late Middle English. It's from not plus withstanding. I saw that, Brother Blankenship, and I said, I could have come up with that. Not plus withstanding. A present participle of withstand on the pattern. I saw this and I got just a little bit excited because on my mama's side of the family, they spoke better French, my grandparents did, than they did English. When they wanted to discuss business that they didn't want the kids to know, they spoke in French. Hallelujah. So I got just a little bit excited. I know just enough French, amen, to, to say hello. I called a friend of mine the other day. We said hello. I said, that's it. That's all I know. God bless you. Amen. Don't say anything else. I might get in trouble. So I got excited when I saw this part. Remember, it's, it's late Middle English, but it's on the pattern of an old French word. It means, or it's pronounced, it's N-O-N, one word. Another word is O-B-S-T-A-N-T. Do we have anybody that speaks French in the house? No, you don't. How would you pronounce N-O-N? How would you pronounce that? No, right? O-B-S-T-O-N-T. 
Okay, that's how they might say it in French or wherever you're from. But in South Louisiana, it would sound like this. Thank you. It would sound like this. No, abstain. No, remember we're talking about notwithstanding. No, abstain. And however she said it, if that's the way your pastor preaches it, then God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for helping me. No, abstain. So what does that mean? No, abstain. She's laughing because that sounds crazy in formal French. I'm talking about slang French from South Louisiana, okay? So forgive me. This no, abstain, it means not providing an obstacle to. Did you hear that? Nudge you. Look at your neighbor and say, did you hear what he just said? It says, not providing an obstacle to. So I expected to find something a little deeper in the original Greek meaning of the word. So I looked it up. This is the great revelation that I found. Notwithstanding in the Greek means but and. I was so amazed. I had to write that down. That was such a great revelation. And we look back at our text. If you could go there with me, verse 14. We look back at our text. We see Paul is talking about some difficulties that he had experienced through the hands. Guess how? Of other people. Mm. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord is going to take care of that. Of whom be thou aware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. Verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Can I tell you today, the Lord doesn't need strengthening, but sometimes in our humanity, we need the help of a God who can step in just in the nick of time, just in a moment's notice. Can I minister to somebody in the spirit right now and let you know, amen, things may be an obstacle to us, but there is nothing too big. There is nothing too hard. There's no mountain too high, no valley too low, no difficulty, amen, that you don't know how to figure out that God hasn't already figured out, amen. He knows the answer before you even know you have a problem. Amen. Somebody receive the word of God into your spirit right now. Amen. 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 I don't know what all bringing all this money means. I guess it means you're receiving the word of God right now. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost sweeps through this house. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can have it. Amen. We want that every service we come into. But I've come to reach for the saints of God. You've been going through difficult situations. You've been going through some hard times. There's a notwithstanding. Amen. You can understand that nothing is an obstacle to God lift your hands in his presence right now nothing too hard nothing too big nothing too difficult he is an amazing God somebody offer up a sacrifice of praise right now come on offer up a sacrifice of praise can I preach a few more minutes Oh, hallelujah. Demas forsook me, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. Amen, he did me much evil, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. No man stood with me, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and helped me. Regardless, in spite of this, nevertheless, nonetheless, even so, all the same, despite this, despite that, Amen. After everything, however, still, yet, be that as it may, having said that, just the same, anyway, in any event, at any rate, when all is said and done, God is on my side. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. God is on my side. God is on my side. I can face any difficult situation with the understanding that I can make it through because God is on my side. Couldn't help but think of the often quoted verse in Romans chapter 8. What shall we say then to these things? You can lump all kind of stuff in there. What's he talking about? Put your situation there. Put your circumstance there. Hallelujah. What shall we say then to these things? What things? Whatever you may be going through. Whatever difficult situation you may be facing, put it here. Oh, Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. We pray that you would minister to somebody's spirit right now. Ah, hallelujah, God. That your spirit will reach down and the word would get a hold of somebody's heart and they would understand. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Clap your hands to him right now. Paul was saying that no matter what I have to endure, no matter what I have to go through, no matter what people do to me or say against me, as long as the Lord stands with me, that is all that really matters. That's why he said all of these negative things are coming against me. He said, notwithstanding. Amen. I know I've been through some difficult times and will continue to go through some difficult times, but notwithstanding, the Lord is with me and that is all all that really matters. Amen. We have all, all of us, every one of us, we have a lot of things. Somebody say things. We all have a lot of things that come against us. But what Paul was saying, amen, what really matters is that the Lord is for us. The Lord is on our side. The Lord has taken us by the right hand. Amen. The Lord is for you and the Lord is for me. Somebody make it personal and shout that right now the Lord is for me the Lord is for me hallelujah come on lift your hands in the presence of the Lord come on stand with me all over the house Anybody want to receive the word of God into your spirit right now? Maybe, maybe you're going through something right now. And I, I don't know. I'm not from here. don't know your circumstance. don't know your situation. I just know people, all right? Maybe you're in this service today and you're right in the middle of a, just a terrible hard situation. This altar, altar's open for you this morning. Maybe... You're not going through something, but you want to receive this word into your spirit because we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what difficult situation we may face as an individual, as a family, as a church. We don't have a clue. So we need to receive this word of God into our spirit. These altars are open. Amen. I'm inviting you to come and just stand. Don't come in a posture of repentance today. I want you to come in a posture of receiving with your hands lifted up. Hallelujah. Remember. No, I'm stoned. No obstacle to. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know it looks bad. But remember, notwithstanding. I know you're outnumbered. But remember, notwithstanding. The situation looks impossible. Hallelujah. But we serve a God who specializes in impossibilities. Come on, lift your hands and receive that word into your spirit. Thank you for your word today, God. Thank you, Lord, for your word.
Come on, if you've got it all together, you don't have any needs. You've already received the word in your spirit. Why don't you find somebody to pray with right now? Come on, encourage somebody in the Lord. Hallelujah. No, I've stalled. While our situations seem difficult and hard, there's a notwithstanding. It's from an old French word, which means not an obstacle to. <laughs> Remember that. And while it seems difficult and hard for me and you, nothing is too hard for God. So I ask you to take this simple yet complex word that the Lord has delivered today. Take it with you. Bring it home with you. Take it to, to, to work with you. And when you're faced with that difficult situation, whenever and however and whoever it may be, remember, things may be hard for me and things may be hard for you, but nothing is impossible to God, notwithstanding.
Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, hiding up the kingdom, making nothing shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated.
had one so far that's been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, his presence is here. His anointing is here in this house. Uh, I wonder if we could just keep on worshiping him. Uh, keep on lifting up our hands. Uh, they're singing this song that God can do anything. Uh, any need that you have, uh, the healer is in the room. Uh, any need that you have, he's the one that can fill the voids. Uh, he's the one that can give peace that passes all understanding. Uh, whatever you have going on in your life, uh, I wonder if while they sing this song, uh, we could just lift our hands. Uh, and if you don't have a need, uh, I wonder if we could just worship him because uh, he's already met every need. Uh, Hallelujah, Jesus. we're in this atmosphere I just feel that if anybody has a special need we're singing about God can do anything and I'm ready he's ready to prove himself to you I have the faith to, to believe that he can do and that he will do amen so if you have a healing that you need in your body I wonder if you can make it down uh, to the front right here if you haven't experienced that healing that you need uh, if there is a void in your life uh, that you need God to fill I want you to make it down here and we're gonna have some ministers lay hands uh, because God is here and our God is alive uh, and he's well and he is able and wanting to do uh, miracles uh, signs and wonders uh, can I get some faith believing people in this house uh, that we didn't just come together here just to sing uh, and just to play church, uh, but we came to be in the presence uh, of a God that can move. Uh, amen. Come on, if you have a healing, it doesn't matter what you need. Uh, if it's a healing, uh, if there's peace uh, and a void that's in your life, uh, or even if you need the Holy Ghost, uh, if you can make it down here, we got some ministers uh, that will anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith. Uh, and I'm believing that God uh, is going to do uh, exceedingly, uh, abundantly, above all uh, that we are able to ask uh, or thank. Uh, hallelujah. God, every need that's here. Come on, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, I wonder if you can make your way down. I would not leave this place knowing that I have not been filled with his spirit, knowing that I have not been baptized in his name. I would not leave here until I have those questions answered. Come on, I wonder if you can stretch your hand forward to these that are seeking a need. Uh, hallelujah. And pray like you want them to pray for you. Uh, when you have a need, you want people to seek God for you. Uh, hallelujah. Because our God's got the power. Uh, he has all authority. Uh, he's able to move. Uh,
Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Come on, he's moving in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The thing I love about our God is that we might be bound by a schedule, but our God is not bound by a schedule, and he's not bound by any time. You can feel the same presence when you're at home, when you're out to lunch, and if you're sensitive enough, you can allow him to just move. Where you can have the faith to pray for somebody on your job and they can be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss, but here's the thing. If you said that I haven't felt what I need to feel, this altar is still open. And he's still here ready to move. And we're still going to have some people ready to pray for you. But I'm telling you this, if you walk out that door and there's a question in your mind, if I have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues like they did in the book of Acts, or if there's questions about if I've been baptized according to how they've been baptized in the Bible, I wouldn't exit any one of these doors until I made sure that that was made evident. So if you need the Holy Ghost, I want you to make it on down here and we'll pray. If you need to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, fully immersed in water for the remission of sins, we have some ministers that are going to be here and there's water right there already ready for you. But for everyone else, uh, you are dismissed in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I want you to continue letting this spirit flow with you while you're at lunch, uh, while you're at home, uh, on your drive, whatever you're doing in between service, uh, and come ready tonight uh, to worship uh, and magnify God. Uh, hallelujah.